Hey, what's going on? Axel here. I'm back for my third vi video on my channel, and as promised, last time I'm going to run some Epic Necro 4. Uh, I'm going to run the Desecrated Temple of All, and just because I don't want a challenge... Oh, well, I'm definitely... I'm, I was trying to decide a few minutes ago which difficulty to run, but I'm not going to run Epic Elite because my character is only level 20, and I don't know if I could pull through it. He's just not quite good enough. Um, epic hard, yeah, I could do that, but I really just want to get flagged for the raid because I would like to start running the raid the next day or two, so I'm just going to go with normal. Uh, my first video, I talked a little bit about myself when I started playing, why I started playing, but I didn't go into too much detail. My first episode was more of a just a whatever type video. I didn't have any specific thing in mind to talk about, but today I'd like to talk a little bit about when I started playing, why I started playing, and why I still keep on playing. Uh, first of all, I started uh, about, I'm going to say about six years ago, that's when I first started playing DDO. Um, and why did I start playing? I wanted to play an MMO, and I wasn't sure which one to play, so I tried a few. I tried, well, the first one I tried was RuneScape, which I actually played way back in the day when I was in, like, ele middle school, elementary school. Well, not that early, but I think I started playing at middle school. Um... It's okay, but it's really simplistic. The reason I started playing it is because it's Flash-based. It doesn't require any downloads or anything. At that point, I wanted something I could play at school at my free time, and I wanted something that I could play at home without downloading anything. When I was a little kid, my parents were... We only had one computer, and it wasn't that great of a computer, and my parents were really... Not strict, but they I didn't want to download anything, so I went with RuneScape. It's Java-based. A um, little later, I tried I tried World of Warcraft for about uh, a couple weeks, but I didn't like it. I just really hate the combat system, and that's ultimately why I went with DDO, is because DDO has such a great combat system. The best I've seen. It's action based. I hate MMOs where you just stand there and uh, you're not relying on Twitch skills at all because honestly, if you're. you don't have Twitch skills in the game, the game really isn't about skill at that point. It's just about a grind. But one of the thing, great things about DDO is there actually is some skill involved in the combat. There's kiting, there's jumping, there's physically getting out of the way of spells. So there actually are things that there actually is some skill involved in the combat. Um, so when I started playing DDO I was really unsure about which class to choose so like every dumb new player I went with the preset classes and I went with a Warforged fighter because after all the recommended classes <laughs> and the character creation for Fighter was Warforged. Silly, I didn't know that it was actually the worst class because it had a penalty to healing, of course. And so I went with the Warforged Fighter and I started playing, like I said, about five years ago. So I believe the cap, I'm not sure if it was 18 or 20. I think it was, tw I, I'm going to say it was 20 when I started playing. I don't know. It took me a while to get a character up to cap, so. I didn't really notice. Didn't really matter what the cap was because I was new and it's gonna take me a long time to get there anyways. But so I played that fighter for a little while. I got him up to about level seven, and I decided I wanted to try a different class. So I cre it created a, a cleric. I went with a I went with the battle cleric path because again I didn't know anything about the game. So I just went with the paths, even though they're terrible if you're new don't go with the pre-selected paths. They're just not good. They're outdated. And 
it's just not optimal at all. You'll, you'll end up with a really gimped character. So I went with the Battle Cleric. What was it? War Priest Siberi of Siberi's pre pre selected uh, path, and that went okay. Uh, I think I played him to like level four until I did a little more research in the game and I figured out that hey, um, this pre selected build sucks. So I went with I went on the forums. I found a good what I thought was a good battle cleric build, which actually was wisdom based. Um, it was, what was it? Um, yeah, it was 19 cleric, one fighter, and back when Cap was 20, that was a really popular build. Uh, people at that time weren't splashing for evasion so much. They, um, they, it wasn't as needed as it is as it was um, up to the last the last year, the year or two, actually year two, three, four probably. Um, but it was an okay build. It wasn't the best at all. I mean, it was wisdom based instead of strength based, which turned out to be not the best. I mean, it, the character could heal, but the DPS was terrible when I got to cap. And so for my next battle cleric, I TR'd him and went for a, a strength base, which is way, which turned out to be much, much better for me. Uh, because you can just do a lot more damage and yes you don't have as many spell points but when you're a battle cleric you're not a caster so you don't need them anyways um, and in between this time I tried out a lot of other classes tried out rogue I tried out I believe I tried out bar tried out wizard and sorcerer um, I think that's it so in that time I went through all the classes and I really settled on Battle Cleric. I just I like the melee cleric style. I really like healing. That's one thing I really enjoyed. And I really had a great time in game of uh, building up my healing skills and learning how to do that. I was so terrible at first and actually I went through my whole first life without even realizing that um, clerics had prestige enhancements. A lot of people had this problem back in the day. It's before they had the enhancement trees. So you didn't... There's no way to know what you needed to take for a certain prestige. It didn't tell you. The only way you could figure out was, again, by someone... Uh, by going on the forums or reading the wiki. So I had no idea it existed. And then one day in Quest, someone asked for my to pop my aura. And I was like, what's an aura? <laughs> He's like, you're level 20? You don't have... An, you don't have you're a level 19 cleric and you don't have you don't have radiant servant remember back then there was no other prestige class for clerics it was just radiant servant or nothing so there's no reason for me not uh, no reason for me to not to have it so after that um, that friendly person insulting me and um, tell me how bad of a player I was because I didn't have healing aura uh, did some research, figured out, oh, um, there's actually such thing as prestige enhancement. So I fixed that. I think that's a, something that everyone goes through. Everyone went through back in the day. It was really common for players to get the cap and not even know that prestige enhancements existed. And that's one of the reasons they made all the changes that they did make, which was to uh, turn all the trees, make all the tree, make all of the enhancement lines into trees that were easily visible, and that was the best part of the enhancement pass, I think. The enhancements can still be confusing, but at least now they're visible. So after I TR'd him, I got through my second life. Uh, I stayed at Cat for a long time after that. I Oh, and at this point, I changed my build from 19-1 to 18-2 just for another extra feat. Well, it really wasn't a big change, but it did help my build a little bit by getting the extra feat.
so at CAP, I just basically set a goal of just twinking out my character for the next life. So I got all the good stuff that was good at the time. I got a nice set of Dragon Touched armor, which was for a while one of the better in game armors you could get. Um, I got. I ran tons and tons and tons of shrouds and got myself a nice uh, light 2 great axe that I was going to use for my next TR and what else did I do? I, I grinded out a lot of in -get good in-game gear and basically just had fun at cap for a long time and I stayed at cap for quite a while and you know those probably looking back this probably were the most fun times I had in the game when cap was 20 the game was so fun I was just running raids all the time and this is one of the things this is why I think the game was better when cap was 20 I mean it's getting better but when cap was 20 we had a great end game and uh, right now we just we don't have one it's getting better but we don't have one um we don't have an end game that's near as good as it was. Um, back when Cap was 20, like I said, we had Hound, we had Shrouds that were being run. I mean, all the time, Shroud was being run. Uh, there was always a Shroud uh, LFM up when Cap was 20. Never, hardly ever could you come in during the day and find an, uh, not at least not one Shroud run up. Usually you'd see two. And they just filled basically automatically. And this was before Destiny, so there wasn't a huge grind um, there wasn't as much of a grind so a lot of people have had alts it's kinda hard to run alts nowadays just because there's such a huge grind now with De epic destinies it's just a pain and th this is the reason I've really only focused on a couple characters really this guy I spend 90% of my time on but I also have a fighter and a, um, a wizard a cap but I haven't, you know, even tried to build more alts than that, just because it's too too much of a pain. Um, I am not going to go through the process of grinding out epic destinies for every character. It was grinding out destinies for this guy was one of the least fun experiences I had playing this game, and I really hate the fact that you can't earned destiny XP while for off destinies while you're in your favorite destinies. I think that's a change they should make. I understand that and I agree that maybe it shouldn't be for full XP but you know instead of forcing that wizard to run in Fury of the Wild to earn fate points why don't you let him stay in Magister or in Shirardi whichever one he likes and earn XP in those off destinies while he's in his favorite destiny. It, maybe to make it fair, maybe make it a 50% a penalty, something like that. I think that would be fair. But the, it's just such a nosebleed, unfun grind to run in, to make your character worse, to progress them. The thing with MMOs that I think, well the way they should work is you should have a an upward, a, a continuous constant upward slope as you level your character should continue to get a little bit better all the time but the way they have it set up now is your character get has a goes up gets better better and better and when you hit 20 or you know, after you filled out your main destiny you've got to go to off destiny so your character gets much worse as a result so you have to take in effect two steps back to take one step forward and that's just not fun. People don't like running it off Destiny. It's a chore. It's not fun. It doesn't add anything to the experience. So let's just allow people to stay in their favorite Destinies and progress their character while playing their character in the way it was intended, in the way they want to play it. Because there's no wizard who wants to run in Fury. There's no barb who wants to run in Magister. You know, there's no rogue who wants rogue who wants to run in you know, Exalted Angel. Well, maybe a couple, but You know what I'm saying. Let's just let people play the game the way they want to play it and not force people to go jump through unfun hoops 
just to progress their character. Progressing your character should be fun and you should see continuous improvement. It's just really hard to just watch your character, to being forced to grind out quests where your character is much worse than he could be. And I still have destinies that aren't filled out completely. I still haven't filled out Magister just because, you know, I, I have most of my destinies filled out and I have enough hit points. I just don't want to, I just can't bring myself to run in a Gimp destiny. It's just not fun. I will do it at some point because I've still got, um, I think I've got, well, Magister is only at level 1. I think Fate Singer for me is at level 3. And I don't remember if there's anything else. Okay, but, well, I have more to tell about myself. It looks like I'm going to not get done talking. I'm going to finish this uh, quest before I'm done talking about my little bio here. But anyways, I, I really got off track there. Um... I stayed at Cat for a while during my second life, and basically I, after that, I reincarnated into, oh, I lost my blitz there. Okay, I better not die here, that would suck. Come on. Alright. Anyways, I stayed at Cat for a while, and eventually I went from an 18-2 cleric, I reincarnated into human, and... I took the same type build. Oh wait, no, my third life, I'm sorry. I went to a wizard. Uh, I took a wizard level, so I was 17 cleric. Uh, 17 cleric, 2 fighter, 1 wizard for a while, and that was fun. Uh, the wizard level was just for the extra feet, basically, so I went all out for feats instead of going with what a lot of people were going with, was splashing two paladin levels. And I, I had a lot of fun with that build, and later I went to uh, my last life. I was a half-orc cleric, and I went for all-out strength, and I took stunning blow. I wanted to see if I could kind of build a tactics fighter slash party healer. So I was 17 cleric, uh, 17 cleric, 15, or 17 cleric, 2 fighter, 1 wizard again. But... I put tons of emphasis on strength, and I think the highest I ever got my strength was 76, 78 on a cleric, so that was pretty cool. And I always wowed people. I'm like, yeah, uh, I'm going into epically stunning stuff, because I also had all the, I had like a plus 10 stunning item, a plus 5 stunning item that I grinded out. So, it was fun, and I ended up TRing him. I ended up um, getting rid of the stunning blow thing because even though it was really fun to have on a cleric, it just uh, wasn't as a it wasn't effective enough on Epic Elite. And I'm not a big fan of the half work uh, swing anim animation. It's a little choppy. So I decided to go back to dwarf just for the extra HP. I don't really need the feet, so I didn't go human. And like I mentioned last video. I reached and uh, basically reached a wall with my character last life as a half orc where he just couldn't get any better because he did not have evasion. He was a heavy armor type character. So this life I went with uh, uh, a, a reflex save focus evasion cleric. I went with this 15 cleric, 3 paladin, 2 monk build. And I really like it so far. Um, I'm I'm definitely feeling now that I'm epics a little bit more damaged than I was when I had heavy armor. But the evasion is super helpful. I mean, I'm taking way less. I'm taking more physical damage, but I'm taking way less spell damage, which is going to save me, especially when I get into some of the raids like raid on, like uh, Fire on Thunder Peak, which is a really fun raid. Um, I don't know why I'm hitting Divine Might and buffing myself by the way the quest is over um, maybe it's because I don't want you to see my horrible stats right now I've still got a lot of work to do with this guy I mean his strength is only 40 he doesn't have crap for gear right now um, I'm having to make a new set of dragon a flawless dragon scale because the guy doesn't the, the last set I had was heavy armor so I've got to make a light armor version because of course he can't wear heavy armor he, he wouldn't have his evasion 
So I, I like this life so far. I went 15 cleric because I ended up dropping below 17 cleric. People say you need 17 cleric to heal, but you really don't anymore. Uh, if you don't know it, 17 cleric, you, you need 17 levels to get your level 9 cleric spells. And one of the most important level 9, well it was anyway, um, one of the most valuable level 9 spells is Mass Heal, which used to be a really important spell back when back when we had uh, back when we had raids where people would actually group up. You know, when Clap was 20, Mass Heal was very important because raids like Hound of Zoriath, uh well not Hound so much, but uh, Vision of Destruction, The Shroud, Von 6, um, what else? Um, Chronoscope. Raids like that had in boss fights where everyone would be in a group. Everyone would group up. So Mass Heal was very effective because you could just throw it over the groups of people uh, in the raid because the melees were always grouped up. But nowadays, the melees are not grouped up. Um, a lot of these raids, like Fall of Truth, um, Temple of Death Worm, uh, Caught in the Web, people just aren't grouped up. And single healing is way more important now than um, group healing. What I mean, single target healing is a lot more effective or a lot more important than um, group group healing. So you don't need 17 cleric anymore. And that's why I only went 15 cleric with this guy. And three paladin. You know, I need paladin splash for saves. And I was planning to go 16 to 2 this life, but right after I TR'd this guy they announced the change to Paladin so I took an extra Paladin level just so I can get um, because I need it for my reflex save I need to get up to about a plus 11 I'm, I'm betting I'll probably get more like plus 12 or 13 so I, I might play with I might LR him and take four Paladin levels and give up another Cleric level but we'll see but I took three Paladin level for all the nice enhancements in Paladin um, I'll bring up the tree real quick. If it will load, okay, I was getting some lag. Uh, I took it mainly for Exalted Cleave, which is a huge boost for me because I'm a Cleave spammer. And this is nice too, this 10% plus 10% uh, healing amp. I really like that. Uh, also, you get, with three cleric levels, you get permit fear immunity, which is really convenient. I don't have to worry about having GH on me all the time or getting a, uh, or slotting in a fear augment. And where am I going? Like an idiot, I ran down to the main camp. I forgot all the quest givers are now up here. So I've got to run back up. But anyway, so I'm enjoying this build. Uh, I'm, I'm playing with, I'm going to, start testing heavy armor versus evasion. I'm going to have to play with it a lot to see which is more effective because they miss, just made all those armor up changes where they're aiming to put heavy armor more in line with where okay put heavy armor more in line with where evasion was because evasion used to just be way better than heavy armor pre this update. So I'm going to do a lot of testing. Um, if I find evasions more helpful I'll probably keep this build or make it for 14 Cleric, 4 Paladin, 2 Monk, like I said. If I don't like this build, um, I might just put him back to 17 Cleric, 3 Paladin. If I'm going to start wearing Heavy Armor, because I don't need the Monk levels. Well, actually, no, I'm not going to do... I would actually probably do a 15 Cleric, 3 Paladin, 2 Fighter. Um, just because Fighter would give me 2 feats like Monk, but it would also give me a couple other goodies like Haste Boost. And I don't need 2 Monk if I'm wearing heavy armor or I might just save myself some money from hearts and just keep this build yeah I won't have evasion but and I'll lose out on haste boost but eh it would be cheaper okay um well I think that about covers my bio <laughs> and I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this video off for now uh, thanks for watching and I will I don't know about this weekend, but sometime this coming week I'll have more videos. I'll try to run some more Epic Orchard, and hopefully I'll be able to run the, the raid this week. 
So until next time, thanks for watching.